Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. Uh, I'm from the city of Leipzig. I work in a club called Elipa Manoke, and I've been de de dealing with awareness for a number of years. And <coughs> I am. Um, <coughs> I have been sent here from an initiative called Clubs Are Culture. That is uh, an alliance of various clubs that want to strive for clubs being recognized as a culture. And most people might wonder why, actually. And that is what I would like to explain. We as clubs find ourselves in a position of having uh, an educating role, and we want to support newcomers. We have an artistic approach or intentions. And uh, we want to strive for toleration, uh, tolerance, integration, things that in the normal world, in the regular world, are not a given, sadly. We are going to talk about awareness today, and that is a topic that is very abstract, which is why I'm going to, to give you a bit of theory and a lot of examples for each item. So let's start with the uh, standard definition. To be aware is English means something like to be conscious. And it's about creating a protected or safe space. It's a verbal work. Uh, so it's not the same as security work. Security is a physical kind of work, but awareness is about clarification, about talking, about giving information, about helping. Uh, in sit problematic situations. We have three main areas that I'm going to talk about uh, when it comes to awareness. There are many more. Um, uh, let's have the next slide, please. I'm going to stick to three areas because otherwise it's going to be too broad. First one, sexism. In legislation, we have the presumption of innocence, which means that if there is rape or other severe intrusions, then normally uh, the presumption of innocence means that the wrong person is believed. We would like to turn this around. We would not like to create a safe space. Often there will not be witnesses. We don't want to be judges anyway. We want to create safety and we want to make sure that information we receive is the truth. <clears throat> so we are trying to um, recognize the definition of the, the power of defining. The, I'm going to talk about that more later. And the other question is, the other issue is racism. Questions like, oh, your German is so good. And the question, oh, where do you actually come from? And uh, people would ask me, where does my coworker come from? Uh, and, and I would respond from the city of Halle, and the, qu the question would then continue. Uh, well, I would say from France, the parents are from France. So white people don't often experience this, but people of color experience it every day. So the awareness approach is something that we, we use to make to explain to people why this is uh, a burden and we would, why we don't want that. It, it helps, it, it prevents people from being recognized and fully accepted. And positive racism, of course, uh, I'm not going to talk about that that much. It's another issue here. And uh, often we accept people in clubs that would normally have problems of being accepted into spaces. We're talking about people of color that being are being excluded through their the color of skin. Uh, that are giving a skeptical glance, and we would like to uh, change that. The next large issue is queer animosity or queer phobia, not just about homosexuality. It's also the question, why are you visiting this toilet and not the other toilet? How do you define yourself? I don't accept that you define yourself as trans. I refuse to accept uh, that you are that you want to be dressed in that way. Uh, and especially in clubs, we have this huge issue of free spaces where people can out themselves. And we're very happy that people feel able to do that. And we want to create the freedom that people that maybe grew up in a small city can see, oh, this is amazing. There are people here that may be openly gay, openly lesbian, and nothing is done, nothing, no harm happens to them. Maybe I can out myself here as well. And maybe this could be the space where a, a man uh, dares to put on a dress or a woman dares to put on a mustache. Uh, so creating a space where these things are allowed. The power of definition is the concept that we work with. And that means that uh, a person that has something happening to them 
how, is able to define well, how this felt for them, what, does, what that means for them. We don't have the right to tell them, oh, it's not that bad, or this is super bad. Uh, the people that are affected have the power to define this. And this is also about power because these people can decide uh, what the consequences are. This could be uh, a clarification in a talk, uh, the call for an, ex uh, for an apology or uh, an expulsion. And uh, there is this one ex um, <coughs> exemption, and that is the house rules, the legal right uh, of someone who runs the place, if a person does not want someone to be expelled, but that person that uh, has, but, but the person who this is about has broken house rules, then it can be the uh, landlord that can decide to expel them anyway. Uh, so how do we deal with the perspective of the people affected? This is, this is very important. I'm going to come to this in the examples too. Um, how can we from the outside assess whether this is a bad situation or not? Um, awareness starts at a very early point, which you will see in the examples. These are very everyday situations that keep happening. So it's not that we get involved in a rape situation or sexual abuse or a very bad uh, the remark, uh, we start earlier. I have given you I have a few examples to you, a small trigger warning here. These are uncomfortable situations. People that are affected by sexism might want to consider if this is the right point to stop. Uh, but there are unpleasant examples. So we have someone <coughs> grabbing someone. You know how it works. There is a queue at the loo and someone is pushing through. Many uh, people are wearing a bag in, on their stomach and that might perhaps um, touch someone's uh, bottom and the person would say, um, the, the affected person would say, I've been grabbed at the bottom and the other person might say, oh, this is just my bag that I was wearing. Is this just an excuse? Uh, and this is where in normal society, we would uh, use the presumption of innocence in uh, normal society. The solution would be to talk to the person that is supposed to have transgressed and that person would say oh i'm sorry it was just the bag i was wearing i'm i'm going to be more careful in the future or the person might say oh I, what does that person actually what what's their problem um, and that second person would then not fit into our safe space concept um, and uh, an important point here, it's not just about expulsion, it is about whether someone fits into the safe space concept, and expulsion is the last resort. The next item, uh, these are things that we all know, we have all experienced this, it could be uh, in, in a public space, people, two people scream, yell at each other, someone keeps trying to hug someone, a female, uh, and that female is pushing them away, uh, but uh, that doesn't stop the behavior. So you would now try to drag the person, the, the transgressing person away, but we are, uh, have this other perspective. We would go to the person affected and, affected and ask them, how are you? Is everything okay? Do you know this person? And uh, sometimes the response might be, please help. But it could also be, oh, this is my little brother and he's just getting on my nerves. He's just completely drunk and I want to get him home. I would like to continue uh, being going out. I'll just get him some water so that he'll get better. So that is the perspective of the person affected. It's not for us from the outside to decide. Even if the situation seems drastic, uh, it's not for us to decide. We know this from the street. Someone might get into a fight. Some people might just not know how to behave. <clears throat> the next situation is... <laughs> Okay, there are some issues here with the slides. We have two people that when we've noticed that one says, hey, you, um, you whore or you, you bitch. Uh, and we could ask around in their friends, uh, in, in, ask their friends and we might find that this is uh, normal in, in, in this kind of social context. People have the right to act, to um, behave to each other any way they want. But at, in a public space, we would tell them, oh, come on, you are using certain words here that are uh, discriminating and others might hear them and we want everyone to have fun. So maybe these kind of jokes is something you'd better leave aside here and take to your home and leave them at home. Um, 
And the last situation that I um, uh, that is very common in clubs, the uh, people that stares, the, the person that stares, someone extremely stares at someone's T-shirts. The T-shirts might have an inscription, and the person might think, "Oh, I want to read this." Uh, he maybe is a bit beyond uh, it, past it already, and and. Uh, um, normally, uh, you would tell the person affected, if you have a problem with people staring at you, don't go to the club. That's not the way we want to do it. We are going to ask the person, hey, what happened here? Why do you stare at this person? Did you actually notice that you stare at them? And then depends on the response. Um, if the person is unable to respond, then maybe it is time to send them home. If they don't realize how they are uh, simply a nuisance to other people. Uh, but if they say, oh, I was dreaming, sorry, I wasn't quite with it, um, very sorry, then maybe the point would be, oh, you're still welcome here, because that is the concept of awareness. We don't expect people to be perfect, and we don't want to be the police. We just want to be able to approach people that behave badly and tell them that that is what they are doing. So we have, okay, we're switching slides here, sorry, we have a few technical issues here, I hope you can forgive us that. So aftercare, uh, so people, bad things happen in clubs, very bad things can happen. So there might be video recordings that were made on toilets in a festival, that was a story, and clubs are not protected from that either. However large the security concept might be, things happen, someone might have overdosed, someone might uh, want to get someone home and abuse the situation. Uh, so many things that we have to deal with, and the point might be reached where we have to do some aftercare. So we need to be able to contact people. Uh, we um, maybe don't ask these people to, to use Instagram or other official channels, not the official email address. That might be a very discriminating experience. In normal circumstances, I don't want to talk to the office then, but I want to have someone that I can save feel safe, that I feel safe talk, talking to. So there should be a number or a contact detail that explicitly leads to the awareness group so that you would, might offer the person, I'm going to call you a taxi. I might even, um, even if the uh, perpetrator has left, I might even offer them a free ticket for the next event because I want to show you that uh, we found you, found you, it was courageous of you to come here and to be open and you are very welcome here. And uh, part of that might be that uh, I call them a taxi, uh, depending on the size of the city, it might be a women's taxi. Uh, there are emergency numbers that are required. In extreme cases, maybe if a rape has occurred, it is very, imp uh, very important to get them to the emergency uh, treatment, uh, get them diagnosed and uh, uh, examined. Uh, also, if there is drug abuse, um, <clears throat> certain uh, drugs uh, have to be uh, uh, extracted from the body. Uh, they leave the body uh, quickly, so that you need testing. Um, so it's very important to have the emergency numbers available, um, where no way I can send that person where they are safe, and uh, to be sure that in aftercare is possible. Um, this all sounds very sinister, but I have to repeat again, that's not how it is. Uh, there are some bad cases, but um, normally, uh, earlier you, you'd be laughed at, but these days it should be the case that people are taken seriously and that they're given good care when someone asks for help. Um, what I find very positive is that criminal reports are being made, which used to be a very uh, difficult struggle, um, because it's very hard to accept that you are, have been the victim of a crime. And that is a very bad thing to feel like. And if a report is being made, often the first question that police ask, what were you wearing? And uh, that is not nice. It, even if I'm in the nude, uh, there is, that is no reason for someone to, to grab me and uh, 
that is important to us. So there are items where awareness stops. These are physical altercations uh, that uh, to get involved, there is not something that an awareness crew can do. Uh, and that is not the objective of awareness. It's about clarification, enlightenment and help. So that is where it stops the physical uh, conflict. And there's always the question, who is affected? If I am myself affected, if I have become the victim of a bad remark or a physical transgression, or whether I just see something. Uh, for example, the dance, for example, maybe just, just uh, siblings having an, uh, some, some beef, that doesn't give me the right to expel them. Maybe, uh, I am not directly affected, even if I'm triggered, maybe, and trigger situations very often occur. For example, uh, there is my ex-boyfriend, maybe I don't like them, uh, they are not something I feel comfortable with. Someone reminds me of that person. Um, so um, I, as an awareness person, might feel unwell in that context, but that's not that other person's fault. So and that is an issue where awareness should be suspended and uh, where you might have to tell someone, maybe you should just uh, uh, in, do some introspection and find out why you are being triggered in this way. If that person would perhaps dance at others in a provocative way, uh, if there's a negative influence, uh, maybe you have to first uh, find out what is happening within yourself. Another thing that happens a lot in clubs or uh, in your friendship, people are in a relationship and are in the process of separating and are uh, entering into uh, fights a lot. They don't want to see each other anymore. Both go to the club and say, I don't want the other person to be here. So that, and they, they would give you a huge talk of what is wrong, what they've done in the relationship. We have thought about how to deal with this for a long time, and the solution is both have to go um, and uh, maybe find out who would go to the club when it's not the club's responsibility to be the peace army in a relationship and we're not going to play psycho psychologists here. That's where it stops. Uh, another thing that I talked about is the house rules or the right of the landlord. Uh, fortunately, you don't have to resort to that very often, only in very severe situations. Um, uh, if it's not just about uh, some bad remarks, but actually physical uh, transgressions. And uh, I would then go to someone and say, this was a very bad remark. Uh, and uh, if I then have here as a response that foreigners have no place in this country, maybe then it, it is the time to use the right of the landlord and expel them. And uh, what's important is to always say that uh, whatever we do, we have to make it clear to the affected person it is cool that you are dealing with the situation. Uh, it's, uh, you are courageous uh, for approaching me. Thanks for doing that. My problem is I've talked to the person and now it's me who doesn't feel well, comfortable anymore. Um, that uh, is uh, what you call the uh, taking on the blame. Uh, people don't often want to have people expelled. Uh, they may, would prefer some clarification, some some understanding, uh, uh, but if I, if, if someone says, oh, your German is so good, maybe that is meant in the best, with the best intention, maybe it's just, a, that just needs some kind of clarification. Uh, so uh, if that's what the pe person affected says, but it's our decision to expel them anyway, then we have to take the responsibility for that. So we are taking the blame so that the person does not feel guilty about what they have started. And uh, now, these are some very theoretical issues, um, uh, some practical issues. This all sounds very nice. People are going to a party and uh, talk to people. Uh, how does it all work in practice? So how should a crew look like? They should be gender diverse. Um, this is very important because depending on the actual situation, we need various kinds of contact people to talk to, uh, especially male perpetrators don't take female crew members seriously, but male people that are affected may want to talk to a man and the other way around. So we will see 
that the crew is has is diverse and maybe includes a queer person as well so that we can definitely uh, not just uh, have men and women in the conventional sense and uh, it's always important to work as a couple so that one person will talk to the person affected and the other person to the uh, other person to the perpetrator perhaps and uh, that's not easy to do if you're on your own you have a lot of distance to cover in the club uh, you may have to pursue someone because you don't know where they're going so you have to be on your toes and uh, don't be alone. Also, for psychological reasons, it's important to have someone to talk to within the crew. And also to be friendly is important. That's a very important difference to the security. Security has to exude dominance. They have to be fit physically to be able to defend themselves and take someone outside. The awareness crew has the contrary approach. Uh, the important thing with the awareness crew is that they are friendly, that they're on the same level as the guests and not talking to them from, from, from a certain height, as it were, so that these people uh, realize no, this, uh, that they are being taken seriously and, and recognized as a guest and uh, be included. And uh, clothing is important here. If I am at a Gothic festival, and uh, wear, don't wear the same kind of clothing, then people might hesitate to talk to me because they don't regard me as a member of the group. They might think that someone uh, alien or from a stranger would come to them. And um, <clears throat> same goes for other festivals. On if, if, if I go to a hippie festival, uh, I can wear the appropriate clothing. Or if I'm at a punk festival, I should always select the clothing that fits the, the event. And uh, uh, also, I should meet them uh, on the same level. Uh, no hierarchy. And uh, also, education is important, should not be underestimated. We have 50% medically trained people and 50% socially trained people, and uh, the other half perhaps are people that are interested in awareness, interested in training regarding racism, sexism, queer phobia, things like that. Um, these are very deep issues. I was able and able to talk about them very briefly. And then there is a very important first aid course that everyone has to do, especially if it's about panic attacks, overdose, you have to be able to uh, administer first aid. So people are sent to various courses. There's a, a lot of um, um, very important what the rules of the clubs is and how do you deal with someone who maybe have overdosed. Uh, what are the facilities in the club? What is the point at which you should call an ambulance? Especially in clubbing, this talk is very much focused on that. Uh, this is not what perhaps what you would have at a concert, um, but even with a concert, it's very important to have workshops on alcohol, perhaps. And uh, do I recognize some whether someone uh, has some? Uh, uh, just had too much to drink or whether other drugs are involved and are they close to a coma. And after all this training, you have to um, perhaps uh, have to talk to each other in the in the awareness team what your triggers are. I might be affected by sexism, but also by racism. So what triggers me? What really um, causes me a problem? Which cases should you take over? Can you talk to the perpetrators? Uh, one thing is to be able to help, but also to, to talk to the perpetrators. And again, uh, talk about this, make arrangements. And uh, also, this is important for a um, door crew. Uh, find a safe word, very important. Um, say, uh, there are no peanuts left in, in the bar, you to say to the other person. Uh, and so that means that one person can go away. Uh, uh, do you want to check whether we have peanuts? And maybe that is a way of getting the one of awareness team member out of a difficult situation. Um, if you have that, it works pretty well. I have to speed up here. Not anymore, <laughs> not even more, please, as the interpreter. Um, so I have created a few examples. We have the emergency button. Um, um, 
this started at a certain punk location. Would you believe that? Uh, and there is the emergency button. And uh, you might think that these buttons are being abused, but if that gets the security out there every time, uh, people realize that it's not much fun. Uh, also, employees can use a button to uh, make it known that people can talk to them about missing loop paper, or, but also about conflicts. Um, and the last resort, of course, is switch on the light, switch off the music. Uh, there is not uh, that is a thing in pubs as well, where there where there's not often that much security. And in every bar, in every wardrobe, there's a button that you can press to alert security. And they then know where they have to go to. Okay, I think that's it for me. So how do we continue? That would be something with a kind of a uh, relaxed talk. We can't get onto that, but we'll come to the Q&A now. Thank you for this important talk. Um, I have to say that sadly there is not really much of, in terms of questions. Oh, that's not for the problem. I can continue. It would be nice if you might give us a few more examples. Yeah, what else I want to talk about is a special thing. We have a council and we uh, our, uh, park rather and we have trainings for people who then patrol the parks at night and those are just things that are beginning and you can see at my presentation I'm not as good not very good at making things pretty but yeah awareness work is a very emotional emotional work our crews are quite diverse and there are a lot of queer people and gay people because most people who want to do awareness are affected themselves but that also means that most people won't do it for longer than five years because yeah it can be heavy work especially if it's repeating cases where you think oh, you, you should know better why do we have to start this t topic again yeah it's a it's a long way ahead of us okay thank you very much Another question. So, what could could be done for people with uh, disablements, like people with autism, for example? And this interpreter has sound issues. I think there is a lag between. The... Ah, it's a it's a very good question. They are beginning. So there are parties without barriers, especially with festivals, and they check how can we include wheelchairs and so on. The plan in our club is have parties without stroboscopic lights and invite people in wheelchairs and deaf people. And autism is so diverse. I think people have to test themselves, uh, test for themselves what they can do, and people know themselves what they need, and maybe they can just ask, do you have strobe lights, or do you maybe have head headphones or ear protection so it's not too loud for me? Where could I go if it all gets too much? Do you have a quiet room? So communication is critical in these cases. So you just ask, well, this is what I need to c to be able to come to you. Can you provide that for me or not? Okay, thank you very, very much.